guys, welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Personal Training Podcast. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the downside of protocols. The reason I'm bringing this up is, as I talked about in the last podcast, I talked about the movement in communities. Okay, and I talked about Knees Over Toe Guy and how he's created an absolutely fantastic community and business model, which is really, really useful. And a lot of people do that very, very well. The downside to that is, this is not picking on that protocol because you see this across any kind of community, is that there's this blind reliance on the protocols and the procedures that they have. And it creates a one size fits all model. And the one size fits all model is really, really bad because what happens is there's so many standard deviations from the norm in any population when you're looking at dealing with any kind of condition, but just simply assigning a standard protocol to solve a particular issue is not gonna solve the problem. Now, from a practical perspective and also limiting our you know, mental bandwidth. I really understand the value of protocols. I can understand when they're useful and I can understand why we're attracted to them. Protocols can be really useful in the things that are rote task. Okay, so something like washing your hands before surgery is a protocol I hope all surgeons basically adhere to. And I hope they have a rough protocol of the surgery that they have to do, but they are willing to go in other directions based on the feedback that they get. And generally what they'll do is they'll actually assess what's happening before they go in, have a surgical plan, before they go in, not a surgical protocol. So there's a very big difference between a plan and a protocol. When we're working with clients, there really is no knee protocol, ankle protocol, back protocol. We can create protocols and they absolutely can work for some people. There's tons of evidence behind that, that they can work and have worked for some people to solve their particular problems. The problem is they create intellectual laziness and intellectual laziness is a real huge problem with personal trainers these days, in my experience and from what I've seen, because it takes away from our problem solving abilities. Rather than looking at problems and trying to solve them, coaches are now looking for protocols for the low back, for scapular dyskinesis, for whatever the condition the client is without actually having a thorough understanding of what the situation is. So what do we do? The thing I'm challenging everyone to do is be better. Okay, that's basically the overarching point of this discussion is that we need to get better at understanding our anatomy, understanding your physiology, understanding all the different things that contribute to people's particular conditions and needs. I did a survey with my students and I would consider it, a lot of coaches would probably consider it to be a fairly advanced exam. I consider it to be, be beginner based on my technical experience and know-how, so that was the reference I was running it from, and every single student failed. And this isn't you know, a reflection on any coaching program, it's the reflection that these people have got university degrees and they're failing these exams. So it's the actual education that is taken from the, surf, uh, the RTOs and the universities is what I was testing. It wasn't stuff that I had made up, okay? So that's one thing I just wanted to clear up. And it really shocked me in a lot of ways. And it shows that what a lot of people are getting taught in these educational facilities is regurgitation of protocols and you know just rote memorization of stuff without actually learning the principles and the fundamentals that lie, draw, draw it all together, that allow you to then problem solve. So what we endeavor to teach our students, and this is what I wholeheartedly endorse that all trainers watching this or listening to this do, is really try and understand the physiology and the physiological principles and the biomechanical principles and the exercise prescription program design principles behind all what we do. And when we do that, that really opens up Pandora's box in terms of the possibilities of solutions that we can create for our clients and we can really ascend to a better level of performance. For example, very big one now, and I got asked this question actually last night, was how do I train a client with type two diabetes. Now, there are some basic rules of thumb for type two diabetes, okay? The first one that I would say would be the protocol, which is make sure they wear shoes the whole time to keep their foot safe, because that can be a problem. Now, a diabetic person, they generally will benefit from, a type two diabetic will benefit from a combination of strength and resistance training, moderate to lower carbohydrate diet, uh, meal spacing, and achieving weight loss. Now, how they get there, there's so many different ways to do that. So you need to look at that person's preferences, their biomechanical issues, and put it all together into a program to allow them to get the desired outcome. A lot of coaches will just say, oh, I'm just gonna throw 
or doctor, sorry, also I can just go for metformin at it, they might not respond well to metformin. They might respond better to berberine. So with a lot of what we do, we need to understand all the underlying physiological mechanisms behind something, or as best we can, and then look at what training modalities help solve that problem. And then what we can do is we can be aware of what the limitations of that person's circumstances may be, and then we can give them a result. Here's another example. Client may come after hypertrophy, but they have very limited equipment. What do we do? Oh, I can't train you because you're, you know, you're not going to commercial gym with pin loaded equipment and machines that we can easily load you up on. We can also lean into frequency. We can lean into tempo. We can lean into rep ranges. We can learn, lean into leverages. We can lean into drop sets. There's a number of different pathways that we can take once we understand how to achieve that physiological outcome. So guys, what I really want us to do is get away from protocol, learn them if we have to, and we look at the protocol, try and figure out what it's trying to do. Why is it working? What biomechanical system, what principle is it training? And if you do that, you can end up making your own protocols far more effectively and also have them nuanced enough to help serve each individual achieve their goals. Thanks heaps, guys. I'll see you soon.